Osaka Community College are speaking out as a COVID vaccine deadline approaches. They say those who have received exemptions have not been given accommodations. Administrative Assistant Patty Sparks joins us now to discuss her experience. Patty, good to talk with you, but I'm sorry the subject matter is not a good one. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so for folks who haven't had to deal with this, accommodations are basically the options given to you when your exemption is approved. Is that correct? That's correct. So Title Seven guarantees that uh, if, if our religious exemptions are accepted, the district is required to literally give us a reasonable accommodation. And so far, your religious exemption was approved, but what has happened since then? Well, uh, it started um, uh, about a month ago. Uh, I've attended many meetings with a lot of employees that uh, we go through an accommodation, um, usually with our supervisor or a VP or whomever is um, you know, above us. And um, we discuss what we do, how we do it, when we do it, and how, mu how much contact we have with students, how much contact we have with, um, you know, in public, with the meetings that we go to, et cetera. And then they take that information and run it through their process, and then they come back and tell us that we're denied. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you are there, you you want to work, you, you're basically seemingly giving them accommodations, and they're turning you down on all of them. Exactly. I mean, we left in March, uh, what, in 2021? Was it 2020 or 2020? Anyway, and, you know, we, we literally came to work on a Wednesday and we left Wednesday afternoon and we never went back for a year. Uh, we accommodated them by working at home, maintaining our workloads, uh, continuing the service to students, um, you know, classified faculty. We all jumped on board. We all got together and we did what we needed to do. And then when we were brought back, we were tested with the temperature and et cetera and, and maintaining a six foot distance. Um, our offices had plexiglasses put in, or pardon me, plexiglass um, enclosures put in to keep us safe and keep people safe from us or, or whatever. And anyway, long story short, we went through all of this rigmarole and then we um, were required to get tested, in which we did. If you didn't want to get the vaccine, um, we could go and test and we did that. Uh, and there was never a problem. We, we we masked, we tested, we social distanced, we kept our, um, you know, we didn't use the refrigerators, we didn't make coffee anymore, uh, we didn't use the water dispensers. So, you know, we kept very safe, and that worked very well. But now, apparently, uh, it, it's got to seem bewildering to you, since it's bewildering to me, because even in their statement, they say that they've approved 99% of the exemption requests. Here's the kicker. We carefully review each employee's work situation to determine if they can still work safely. But it would seem that you have proven you can work safely, and yet and you're still not being allowed to work. For months, we have been working and and testing and wearing our mask and and that was a very successful endeavor as far as I can see. Um, it's unfortunate. I, I don't understand, especially now, I know the, the Omicron variant that's out. I was actually sick over the winter break and had the, um, I guess, the Omicron and, and, you know, survived it. I'm fine. And now I have my natural immunities, which is even better than the vaccines, I think. And what I'm reading, um, it backs me up. But I mean, I'm probably one of the safest people to be around, and yet my um, accommodation was not met because I am too high risk because I work in an office with four other people and our VPs and president works in their um, private offices where they have doors. Um, I, I don't get it. We successfully and handled all of this in the previous when the pandemic was even much more serious with the Delta and the, the original strain. Yeah, I wonder at what point the, the university is going to realize that we are going to be living with this and folks still need to work. Well, obviously, I know you talked with uh, Teresa Sardina this week. We're talking with you today. Uh, the deadline is tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm curious to see if you're going to hear anything from the college and obviously keep us in the loop because we want to yeah. follow this. We want to get folks who want to work 
in their offices, in their buildings, at their construction site, doing their postal route, whatever their work is. You know, in a day and age where we have so many folks that uh, are not wanting to go to work, when we've got you able-bodied, willing, and ready to go, and you're not being allowed to work, it's it's a pretty interesting conundrum, to say the least. And if I could just say yeah. one thing, let's not forget about how this affects the students mm -hmm. that are not allowed on campus as well. Our students are... are uh, close to graduating, um, you know, have very few classes to move on to uh, a four-year university, and they're being denied um, education as well. Let's not forget those that, that, who, who essentially are our bread and butter. Right. And I, I'm sure they are the, the love of your heart. That's why you chose oh. to do what you do. All right, Patty, my goodness. Every time I think I've heard it all as far as this <laughs> pandemic uh, situation goes on, another story comes about. Um, thank you for your time. I hope you get some good news again. Please keep us in the loop. I will. Thank you so much.